there are a lot of guys <laughs> who have something to say and express <laughs> themselves whether they should have or should not have. A lot of a lot of coaches are. We're at the time of the year where the writing's on the wall for a lot of guys. That's true. That's true. And and remember when uh, the the uh, I think it was the episode where the guy asked Jimbo in the crowd, "Where's your loyalty?" Uh, which mm-hmm. was Florida oh. State's. Ty, whatever that guy's name was from Spartanburg. Mike, Mike from Tallahassee. No, but the guy from South Carolina last night. Tyler, Tyler. Tyler from Spartanburg. Um, yeah, but most of those calls, if you remember, were screened to the point where I feel like it was either employees or employees' friends calling in to ask softball questions to Jimbo. Sure. Towards the end of Jimbo's time, for sure. That's huh? what I'm saying, that last one or two. My Holy buddy. moly, at Clemson, they are just, hey, speak your mind, baby. Speak your buying. mind. We will give you a platform. It's a, it's a plant. I don't I don't know that I buy that the call was a plant. I do think he – Dabo was fine with them letting him go because I think he had already – he knew, he knew what he was going to get. Think about the stats he had. He knew what he was laying he knew, in wait. Well, but he didn't. He knew he was going to get it. Like he's, it's been going that way. He's been getting hard calls. I, I so just, he knew there was going to be a call. I don't think it was a plant because it got. It was kind of personal and bringing up the Bible. I don't think Dabo would like be cool with somebody making bringing up Bible verses. I to, think. To, I think. Well, well, okay. So here's what I would tell you. I think he knew there was going to be a call or two. Yeah, and maybe even suggested we let a couple of calls right. come through. Because I want to remind these people how, how, how awesome fortunate, I am. Yeah. How fortunate I you want are. everybody to understand just how appreciative of me they should be. <laughs> and their sorry ass little lives in this tiny little community. But if not for me, you'd mm. still be out here, you know, living this. You'd be going seven and five every year. And you're, you know, not mattering in any way. So, yes, that, that's what I mean by plan. I mean, I think he knew, and he was like, let it ride, let it ride. And Did he say he's never failed in anything in his life? Yes, and he said a lot of crazy things. He, he said he wanted to get married. He got married. Well, yeah. That was. Dude, that, that really, that, for most of us, that's our biggest accomplishment. <laughs> no, um, what I, but I, he's, he's uh, he wasn't he a walk-on? Yeah. No, I mean, so yeah. is that, like, some great – I mean, it's cool. It's yeah, better than most it's, people. Yeah, it's an achievement. It's better than most people. Yeah. But to me, I don't think that's a – you've been a success in athletics as a player. The, if the height of it right. is you become a walk-on. Well, I mean, I, I mean that's I just, cool. it's a weird thing to say no matter what your level of success is right. that I've never failed at anything. Right. That's a weird thing to say. But also, I think – I mean, look, we, we guessed last week that I thought he was on the verge of a breakdown. Like, we've seen this coming. That microphone last week where it looked like he wanted to throw it. Yeah. We talked about it on a coach. I'm like, man, he's that close to slapping that mic off the dais. He was really yeah. close this week. And you can see he's beginning to break. And there are many reasons for that. But one of the things that I find fascinating is he's done this a lot in the last year and a half. And I just don't know how he sees that this benefits him to continually chide fans on the whole about – how unappreciative of yeah. him they are. It's just a weird stance to take. Yeah. Like some, it's, it's so insulated. You know, and I don't think it's the last year and a half. He did it. I think one of their championships year, years where they gave up a lot of points to South Carolina and still won, but he, everybody was complaining about the defense and he's like, y'all going to complain about the defense. We just beat South Carolina for the fourth year in a row and are going to the playoff. Uh, you know, so he's been, he's had this bubbling in them for five years. It's just now they have more ammo to point out, hey, man, your program's kind of crumbling and you're not really doing anything about it. He's also right to say, "What? look at what I've given you. Now, we, we are not three years into this. This is not 2006 Florida State. They were, they were number two in the country last year in November. Yeah, and, would, and listen, nobody, nobody, nobody would argue with you about his successes and what he brought to Clemson and his overall record. And even last year it was thought to be a down year, and they won eleven games. Right, but you can't be the guy prattling on, shaming fans, answering a question about being four and four about how great you are. How's that going to go? You, it's that, never going to be a good look. It's never going to be a good. How look. would you Bobby, answer it, Bobby Bowden? What, what, what could, Bobby Bowden had said that. And I, you know, there were, they, you know, there were a couple times where he took shots at fans. It's never PlayStation All American. Never smart. It's but, never smart. But he could have literally said, "You know, you guys were going to close this program down. Like yeah. literally, you guys were going to be done with college football. Who knows what this university would be right now? You wouldn't have that stadium. You wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for me." But he never did that. I mean, it's just because why would you do that? I you mean, could, it's just a ridiculous he, thing he to do. He starts okay with the answer. The initial answer, like, you're free to have whatever opinion you like. I think we've had a lot of success around here. And, yeah. He could have ended it there. Yeah, that should have been right. That should have been the ending. And if you were really smart, and let's say you knew this was coming, 
You would have told the freaking host of that show, by the way, just so you know, host of the show, here's what we've done in the last seven years. It's second only to Georgia and Ohio State or whatever it was, or Alabama. And, you know, at that point, because you're playing ball together here, man, that host at that point ends the call. Thanks, Dabo. Thanks for taking the high road. I'll have you guys know out there. Right. Boom. Now he lays it out there right. for everybody to hear. Yeah. And, you know, well, thanks, guys. You don't have to say that. But, uh, you know, I know everybody's frustrated, and you take the high road. You can't do that. And the and the, the problem from Dabo is and it's is that it's not just this season. And, like, Corey, you, say, you make the point last year, at one point, they're number two in the, season, in the country. Fine. Except for the fact that for years now, it's been years now, where his decisions in terms of promoting from within are ridiculed and they come back to haunt him. You look at he, I mean, he had to he had to make a change in one of his coordinators last year. He was forced to yeah. because it was so bad. Then refusing to entertain the transfer portal, where you've got Florida State, who just beat you in your stadium, has a lineup filled with transfers, and you refuse to do it. So, I mean, that's the frustration from them. You ran off DJ Uyungle and you brought in Kate Klubnik, who's not playing a whole lot better than DJ was and you're not winning more games like every decision you're there's things to complain about and now the results are all bearing out the concern right. all that. that is granted like all that is granted and Clemson fans are right to point that out but I'm saying in the one-to-one interaction of you're no better than Tommy Bowden why are you getting 11 million dollars a year to be four and four is outrageously stupid it is it, it, that's, that's all I'm saying it's an outrageously stupid take For to sure. have but of course, it's a call-in show from a fan right. who's obviously frustrated. You, this is what you get. But it's I mean, what we it's, talked about on it's like Coach reading the comments section of a website. I mean, right. Jesus. But that's why we gave Kyle Woodingham the one compliment in, in Coach Speak show history. Yeah. Because he got questioned by a reporter. A question was asinine, and he didn't get upset. He no. just said, "Oh, I think we've actually been really good." And he just cited kinda... the actual number for what they were ranked <laughs> against the pass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, and the thing that gets lost in this, and I, I hope Florida State fans don't get mad at me for this. Clemson has great fans, incredible fans. They've been filling up that stadium for years Forever. before Dabo got there, before yeah. they had good teams. And I just don't think he appreciates playing in a stadium that maybe, like, go coach Wake, man. Go coach Wake for a year when the students the students that show up all leave at halftime and half your stadium is garnet. Uh, even though you've beaten this team you're playing every year since 2018, it's like appreciate the fan base you have and don't assume all Clemson fans are that dude on the radio show that's calling you because they're not. They're upset awesome. with this season. They're frustrated. That doesn't mean they think you suck as a coach and they don't appreciate what you did the last decade. Well, right. It's a it's a vocal minority. It's a guy that's uh that's calling in who's frustrated, and you got to know what that is, and you got to categorize that before you ever get to where you're answering that question. You got to understand from the source that you got this question, and just move on from that. But I mean, at the end of the day, for him, and I say this all the time, and I said this about Coach Bowden, who didn't say anything nearly as egregious as this, but you're never the victim of your success. You cannot play the role of victim here. You're mad because you've succeeded and you repeatedly tell everybody about how much you've succeeded to this degree that no other Clemson coach before you ever has over a sustained period of time. And because you're having a year that's not to that level this year, you resent the fans for not, in your mind, appreciating that right. success. Man, right. You're not a victim, dude. You're paid over eleven million dollars. You're doing. You're not a volunteer, it. man. It's, you're doing yeah. just fine. Yeah. And that's where you just you would like a head coach that that feels confident enough in himself to not feel like he needs to get down to that level because you are making eleven million dollars a you're year. You're punching down. It's dumb. It's just it, it, there's no benefit to it. So it's yeah, no you know, benefit to call in shows. Jeff hasn't taken a call That's since right. before COVID. Well, you just, I, you know, it, everything moved in that direction because after a while, the study showed that listeners to call-in shows got tired of hearing the callers. <laughs> they were like, well, why would we listen to Jerry and Thomasville say yeah. a thing? Who cares what Jerry said? I'm not listening. Is this a Jerry. white Jerry? Is this a white Jerry? <laughs> any Jerry. Any okay, Jerry. Okay, any Jerry at all. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that's yeah, that you're kind of like, eh, no thanks. Don't need to do it. It's weird though. This is one where, like, imagine if Florida State was where it was two years ago, and this was going on at Clemson. Like, would we be spending more time on it or less time on it? Like, it's kind of because the Schadenfreude's great. Oh, it's awesome, but, but it's, it's also awesome. like in the like you've passed Clemson now. I feel like it's like you've got bigger stuff going on than yeah. worrying about 
the dumpster fire that well, Dabo's. I think what it is though on. is it, I do think it's it's something that emboldens Florida State fans because they're seeing the the the, the cracks in the armor that right. we've talked about, and now you're seeing it unravel a little bit. Now the head coach is talking down to people on a regular basis. By the way, this had yeah. to be a call, but he's done it at press conferences. And so you're hoping that this is your chief rival in this conference is unraveling at a time that you're ascending. So now the, you know, you're opportunistic and you're excited about what the future holds because it doesn't look as if they're going to get it together right away. Now you need Clemson to sustain poor play moving forward. And I don't know that that's going to happen. We'll see. You've got some good players there. It is weird. Yesterday I was looking into, we got to go to break, but, Yesterday, I was looking into all of the numbers I could possibly find that kind of express the story of Florida State's season, right? And I just wanted to talk about where they were defensively, advanced metrics, all that other stuff, Corey's favorite, Femoro. Mm-hmm. And I wanted, to, I wanted to do all of it. And so I, I really did. I hit up every possible place I could go. And one of the things that stood out to me was that when you're swimming in the deep end uh, with the other talented teams, so like Florida State now finds themselves alongside in these statistical measures – Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, and all these teams that you would you know project to the playoff, right? Like a pretty high percentage of the time when I'm looking through these numbers, I'm like Clemson. And you'll look and I'll go, how is that? It makes no sense that they're as bad that they're they've lost. None. The yeah. That's and what Dabo's even, trying to say, gang. They're a no. few <laughs> plays away from eight no. They're, and you I guys mean, just want to criticize. It's <laughs> astounding how they found ways to lose football games. It truly is. Like, even when you look at the game they just lost, where they're like, they, they had a success rate three times higher than their right. opponent. There's nothing about that game that suggests they should lose. A, a couple of weeks back when they lost a game, they had like 300 yards more yeah, than they their They shouldn't opponent. have lost to Duke. They shouldn't yeah. have lost oh, to Miami. You could go on and on yeah. and on. It's nuts. 